Hey everyone, where are your adrenal glands? They sit right on top of each kidney and are a powerhouse. They produce cortisol, aldosterone, and androgens. Your life depends on it. So today I'm diving into a topic that's crucial for all you nursing students out there, Addison's disease. This condition, though rare, is vital to understand because of its potential impact on patient health. Adrenal insufficiency is another word for Addison's disease. It is usually caused by an autoimmune response and the body stops making its own cortisol. Cortisol is critical for life and has many functions including blood pressure and electrolyte balance. It is also responsible to maintaining hydration. So let's jump right into the top five things you need to know about managing Addison's disease. First and foremost, clinical judgment is key. This isn't just about knowing what Addison's disease is, but understanding how it manifests in different patients. Symptoms can vary widely, but they commonly include fatigue, muscle weakness, and weight loss. Also, bronze skin because of increased levels of adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. ACTH is a hormone that stimulates melanocytes in the skin to produce melanin, the chemical that gives skin its color. This increased melanin causes darkened or discolored patches of skin, which are often more noticeable on sun-exposed skin and pressure points like the elbows and knees. In more severe cases, patients might even experience what's known as an Addisonian crisis, which can be life-threatening if not treated immediately. Next up, watch those electrolytes. In Addison's disease, the adrenal glands don't produce enough cortisol and aldosterone, leading to a decrease in sodium and glucose levels and an increase in potassium. This can cause serious issues like hyperkalemia, which is elevated potassium levels in the blood, potentially leading to cardiac problems if unchecked. Remember, regular monitoring of these electrolytes is essential. Thirdly, stress management. Patients with Addison's disease can deteriorate rapidly during physical or emotional stress because their bodies can't produce enough cortisol to handle the stress. It's crucial to educate patients on the importance of recognizing stressors and using strategies like medication or therapy to manage stress efficiently. The fourth tip is about crisis management. Every patient with Addison's disease should have an emergency plan, especially for an Addisonian crisis. This includes having emergency injectable hydrocortisone available at all times. Knowing how to use this medication and when to administer it can literally be a lifesaver. Finally, never underestimate the power of patient education. Encourage your patients to wear a medical alert bracelet and to carry an emergency steroid card. These simple tools provide critical information to healthcare providers in an emergency, ensuring prompt and appropriate treatment. Understanding these aspects will not only help you manage patients with Addison's disease effectively, but also prepare you for unexpected challenges when caring for your patients. Bonus tips. Patients in a crisis with high potassium are at risk for cardiac dysrhythmias, so an EKG and telemetry is vital. IV fluids with dextrose are important, and when ill, the requirements for cortisone will be critical. Patients will be on lifelong steroids and need to understand the circadian rhythm and cortisol levels falling and rising.